Hello, everyone, and welcome to ICM's weekly educational webinar. My colleague, Saima Mahesh, and I would like to thank you for joining. Today's topic is very essential in the world of trading, since many of the traders do not take it seriously and they end up failing. We chose to talk about developing a trading plan. Uh, what is a trading plan? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start by simplifying the stages of building your trading plan. Check how we can backtest the strategy using MT4 strategy tester. And then Sai will be speaking about how to avoid top traders' mistakes and managing your risks. So as we said, uh, a trading plan is a key pillar for, be, for being successful in Forex trading. That is considered among the key pillars to being successful uh, when trading, not only Forex, but uh, but in all, all other uh, types of trading, uh, commodity trading, stocks trading. So it's not about FX only or currencies only. Cost planning in all, uh, in all matters is the base for success. Whenever you want to do something properly and successfully, you plan it. If you want to have an excellent vacation, you plan it ahead of time. You decide on what you want to do during this vacation, manage your time, your spending, identify your risks to end up having something fulfilling. The same should apply to your trading journey. A trading plan should cover all aspects of your trading, among them your personality, expectations, risks, and your trading system. So first, you should start by assessing your financial conditions, checking whether you can afford such type of investment, what funds am I going to use for this investment, how much I can risk, how much I can afford to lose, and in return, what is the reward that I want, I want to make $500 per month, uh, it will have certain risks. If I want to make 10,000 per month, it will have different type of risks. And if I, if I want to have $100,000 a month, it also has different types of risks. So, uh, so, so usually when, when, when you first consider trading, you have to first check your financial status, how much money I can uh, I have in total. For example, if I if I have all my net assets are around one hundred thousand dollars, usually I do in any type of uh, of investment I go for diversification. I'll consider that entering this type of investment, which is FX trading, or uh, the margin trading, is a type of investments that I'm getting in. So I I dedicate around ten to twenty percent of my total capital in order to trade and not more than this amount. And then this 10 to 20% chosen amount, I will also split it into two. One of it, one of uh, the smaller part uh, should be used for, uh, for, for risking. So if I want to trade, for example, if I can afford, if I have a total net assets of $100,000, let's say, and I choose to risk $10,000, so I'll open an account with $10,000. But with this $10,000, I'll make my assumptions as if I have only ten thousand or uh, one thousand or two thousand dollars in my account. So I'll be trading this one thousand or two thousand dollars and I'll be using the rest of the rest of the ten thousand in order to back up my account in, uh, in in any types of risks. For example, I had uh, I had wrong assumptions on the market and I'm uh, I'm losing. So this eight thousand dollars should be as a backup for my account account and not use the whole amount, the $10,000, as one, uh, one, one lump sum. So uh, also your expected return should be realistic relative to the amount that you are depositing. A lot of traders believe that if they deposit $500, they want to make $10,000 a month. They want to make $100,000 if they, if they deposit $10,000. If you want to, let's say, make $100,000 from $10,000, it means that you are making 1,000% return. If we just have a simplistic look at, at how, how uh, investments work out, usually a, a, an investment with a return around 10 to 12 percent a year is, is considered a successful uh, a successful uh, investment. So what about considering making 1,000 percent return? On your uh, on your capital, so so that's why you should be choosing a certain uh, a realistic uh, capital relative to my amount. Let's say I'm going to deposit ten thousand dollars. I expect to make ten uh, ten percent a month or five percent a month. That should be a realistic goal, five hundred dollars a month, one thousand dollars a month, but not not exceeding this. Since if you are want to exceed this uh, expected return, you will incur also, you will be exposing yourself to more risks of losing your uh, your money. You have to accept the fact that your trading account is not a lottery ticket, but it is a medium to help you earn another realistic income. So this is in terms of defining uh, defining your, uh, your, uh, your realistic goal. So uh, now we're moving to, uh, 
we're moving to evaluating your risks and knowledge, your skills and knowledge. So you have to first ask yourself, what do you know about trading? How much time did you spend practicing if you started already practicing on your demo account? Is it enough? Am I ready to, to, trade, the, to trade my live account or I should spend more time practicing? What analysis method do I know? Am I capable? Am I fully capable of using them? Do I know uh, everything about fundamental analysis? Everything about technical analysis? Am I going to use one of them? Am I going to use both? So also you have to decide, to decide on this. Uh, uh, are you capable uh, emotionally to deal with risks emerging from trading? Can you commit enough time to chase your trading journey? Were you able to? Uh, are you able to 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 dedicate certain? Uh, so a certain time limit uh, every day in order to to follow up on your trading. So these are the questions that you have to to to, to ask yourself and write their answers down in order to write your uh, as a part of writing your trading plan. You have to 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 also know your weaknesses. What are your weakest points and try to work work on improving them. Okay, my weakest point is that I can't uh, I can't close a losing trade. I have to keep holding my, my losing trade. No, you have to work on this by setting, for example, a stop loss. And this stop loss, you shouldn't uh, you, you shouldn't uh, adjust it. Just accept the fact that there are losses and there are winners. And I have to make make sure that I, I increase my chances of winning and decrease my chances of losing. And also make my losses short and let my profits roll. So that's how it works. Uh, don't rush to, to, to trade a real account. There will always be time to trade. You, you have to always make sure that you have the enough skills and enough knowledge in order to trade. Which currency pairs, are, which markets am I going to trade? Which currency pairs? Uh, th these are, uh, th these are uh, among the key questions. So uh, as we said, you have to make sure that you have the enough skills and knowledge in order to, uh, to, to trade. Creating your trading system, which is the most uh, interesting part, and especially when it comes to uh, to deciding on, uh, on on what are the indicators or what are the, the methods that you want to include by your trading system. Many people believe that the trading plan is a trading system. No, your trading system is part of your trading plan. A trading plan also has everything related to emotions, your uh, your your overall financial risks, and not only uh, it's, it's not only compared by your trading system or your trading strategy. So usually traders rely on technical analysis for entries and exits, uh, uh, but, but but some also uh, and fundamental analysis in order and risk sentiment in order to confirm the trend. So uh, you have to you have to ask yourself which markets am I going to trade? Am I going to trade currency markets? Am I going to trade commodities? Am I going to trade stocks? What are the risks of trading currencies? Is this currency pair volatile? Is it uh, the, the, does it go for range trading most of the time? So these are the questions that are essential to 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 have uh, answers. Am I going to execute my trades manually? Can I handle the stress of of keeping uh, of following up on a trade or maybe adding to to uh, to a certain position while while I'm in heavy loss maybe maybe this is this is part of your uh, of your strategy so can you handle the stress of uh, of executing manually your trades or you'll go for an automated trading system usually traders fall uh, after after uh, answering these questions you have also to uh, to to choose your trading style usually traders fall under these uh, trading criteria so uh, position traders, they have minimum number of trades, they have high expectations for the trade, and they are willing to hold their trades for weeks or even months. So for example, they have one or two or three trades per month. They just look for long-term trades for mainly they, they rely their, uh, their decisions on fundamental trade, on fundamental analysis. So they believe that there's gonna be some changes maybe in the monetary policy of a certain, uh, of a certain central bank that will affect this currency by one, two or 3%. And they will, are aiming to earn these, uh, these change in percentage points. So that's why they will have an expected return of around 200 pips. Their duration, they are willing to hold their trade for weeks, for month even. Going for the swing trades uh, or swing traders, they are willing to, uh, uh, to 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 have uh, three to five trades per week. So they they just maybe they have uh, they look up for 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 trades in, in different markets, and also they are expecting to earn between 50 and 150 pips per trade. And they are willing also to hold their trades per days or also for weeks. 
this is uh, the, these are the swing traders. For day traders, a lot of, we have a lot of tra day traders uh, in, in, in forex trading. They they go for three to five trades per day. They expect a return between 10 and 50 pips uh, per each trade, and they, they aren't willing to hold their trades towards the next day. So at the end of the day, they are closing their positions whether they are winning, winners or losers. So they, uh, they they make sure to close their positions day by day. And the most risky uh, risky uh, style is uh, scalping. So we have a lot of scalpers. They believe that they can grasp a little bit of pips uh, or minimum pips from the market in uh, less uh, less time. So it's very intense, and not all people can handle the stress coming from scalping. So a trader will be executing a couple of trades, expecting a rate uh, a return ranging between one, one pip and ten pips, and can hold the trade for seconds or even minutes. So this is for uh, for scalping. Once you have a certain trading system, so for example, you know a couple of indicators, you merge these indicators together, you know the outcome of each indicator and what does it mean for a certain currency. So when you join these uh, these outcomes of these different indicators, you have now a trading system. This trading system, it's either you 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 write down the uh, the rules of this trading system and you you backtest it manually by going going over the charts uh in order to to check how did how it did perform or you can go for for a certain for someone who's uh, who's good at programming or or maybe some websites that can uh, allow you to uh, to create your automated trading systems and once you have this uh, this strategy uh as an automated system, you can go for the MetaTrader 4 platform, which can allow you to backtest your uh, your strategy. So, for example, here we'll take we'll take an example. So, if you want to go for your uh, strategy tester, you click here on this icon. You'll open the strategy tester. This is the strategy tester. You have the expert advisor built in. We have the moving average and uh, the MACD from from MetaCodes. So, uh, I choose the expert properties. For example, here we have a certain lots, the amount, the minimum, the, the risks that I want to uh, to, to, to have. Uh, so we have different inputs here. And also among them, these inputs, we have the moving average. Let's use shift zero. And the period of the simple moving average, for example, it's 20. So when I press OK, after this, I choose the symbol that I want to test. Uh, the, the period, for example, I want to uh, implement this strategy on the hourly chart, on the daily chart, on the one minute chart. So I, I choose my period. I choose my spread. I set the date also, for example, I want to test, uh, let's say I want to test uh, the, the recent uh, the recent trades. I want to make sure that I have enough data in order to test. So also, you can you can buy certain data from uh, from certain websites that, that do provide thick data so I can have uh, a good quality in backtesting my, my expert advisor. I can set also my visual mode so I can see how, how the trades are running. And I go for start, and when I start this, uh, the, the the chart will open. And here, when I click on this, it will start implementing uh, the trades as if. So here, for example, when we have a cross between the price below the moving average, it will it will uh, initiate a sell position, and vice versa. When the price goes above uh, the, the the moving average, it will uh, initiate a buy position. So here I'll be able to see how my strategy would be running if I was running this strategy, for example, for the past couple of months or days. So uh, I can also follow up its results here. So these are the trades. I can see the equity chart, and also when at the end I have the report. So let's say this is this is it. So um, it has finished, and now here I can see we have to rerun it since we just. Okay, so this is it. It ended. So here's a, a small example. Uh, this is the equity chart. We started with ten thousand dollars. These are the trades. The, the this is my balance. It was going down, and then the market recovered, or my strategy performed well, and I ended up making a little bit of of money. These are the trades that were executed with certain amount of risk, and this is the report that I can check. So I have to make sure that the, my modeling quality is is the highest, around 99%, so I have a good uh, testing data. Also, I have to, here I can see my initial deposit, how much money I made on the, the profit factor, 
my drawdown. So all this information, they will help you assess whether your trading strategy is profitable or not. You have to look out for the maximal drawdown, which is the most, the maximum amount that, that you lost during this performance or how much uh, you, your account went down during this uh, testing, how, how much, how many trades were profitable, how many trades were uh were were losers what what's my largest profit trade what's my largest losing trade what was the average profit on a trade and what was the average loss on a trade also here i can see the consecutive wins and consecutive losses so all these details will help me assess whether my trading strategy is uh is successful or not and when i have a, a good outcome when i do a proper back testing and proper stress testing and i make sure that my system is working then i can implement it in real trading so this is part of um, testing your trading strategy. And finally, you have to, um, so, so some traders believe that this is this is not uh, important. However, it's one of the key parts to have a diary or trading diary. A trader must, must always log his trading fills. It's better also, even though you have your trading statements, it is better to write again, your entries, your exits, how much money you made on the trade, uh, your volume, your trade costs, because it will uh, it will help you more assess also each trade alone to check whether you have followed uh, the trading strategy precisely, what went wrong, what went right. So also you have to write down these notes in order to perform better in the future. So these are um, this is why it is essential to have a trading diary. Also, some some traders do have a growth plan. So for example, they they are working on a one percent a day. So they they have a structure for a growth plan for a month, and they have a certain uh, a certain target to be every day. And then when they reach this target, they stop trading. So also they can they can have proper follow up on their trading. So this is how you can form your trading plan. These are the key steps of forming your trading plan. Now we'll move to Sai when uh, he's, he's going to talk about how to avoid the major traders' mistakes. All right. Sai? Well, hello to everyone. Uh, this is Sai joining with you. Hope everyone's doing well. So now uh, I can say it, uh, a very important, we are going through very important topics today uh, about the trading plans and uh, mistakes and money management. Uh, so usually, uh, I mean, uh, that's um, every or every day, like uh, every traders have, have been come across this thing. So the today next topic is like how to avoid traders top mistakes. Uh, like, you know, while some trading mistakes are unavoidable, it's everyone knows about it. Uh, it is uh, important that uh, you don't make uh, a habit of them, you know, keep on doing mistakes, you know, and learn from them, like both in successful and unsuccessful positions. You know, there are both types of uh, uh, things are there with we have to keep in mind so we are always like we are going to look into each and of these mistakes one by one and we're going to show you some techniques to avoid them to overcome this type of mistakes so that you know you can be better preparing during the market time hours so in here like uh, first we have taken a uh, have a trading plan so mr royal was saying about you always should always have a plan to trade you know just like we can't do a speculation way of to you know get into the market jump into the markets and uh, okay i made uh, I, I took the position so it should always should not it should come in profit it's not like that you know it should have a proper plan that means make a plan follow your plan trade uh, without having a plan is a mistake it's completely a top most mistakes so where we're going to discuss here only the to avoid the mistakes there are only few things are there apart from this like there are many things which call like psychological mistakes are avoid to be there but we are going through a few things here so first thing like uh, having a trading plan and coming to the next is like a uh, place stop loss orders see the system has the stop loss like everyone is very scared sometimes you know every time i took the stop loss every time the market comes and take my stop loss and go away you know at the time of initiating the position itself you must know like uh, your exit point to limit your loss. That means you are make sure that uh, what tolerance of loss you're going to take. When you are very thorough on your plan, on your trading plan, like you have very good stick strategy or your proper strategy you have been following up, definitely you can defend your stop loss. So that makes sense. Uh, but not like just keeping your random stop loss or just keeping your random profit. It never works. You know, Maybe like out of 10 trades, maybe it may give you two trades or three trades in profit, but remaining other trades can be in loss. So because of this way, 
and made if you're making a proper stop loss you, you should never ever enter the market if you are not sure about the stop loss let's make sure that because as oil was saying about your capability of risk so how much you capable with risk so if I'm, I'm if I'm a capital of taking risk of thousand dollars out of ten thousand dollars, that's fine. Then your stop loss should be within the range. Don't move the stop loss more what you are able to lose it. You know. So that's how exactly. So this the common mistakes. One of the common mistakes like to avoid. So stop loss is a must in the markets and make sure that you are defining the stop loss in the correct place and correct uh, uh, difference of your risk. So next is protect your profits. It's very important. So most of the traders that do like, you know, they want to run the profits well and good, not bad, or running the profits. You know, that's well and good to take more profit. But may, when you make, say, like 150 points profit, you should then to consider the protected profits. So when, suppose, markets are fluctuating either side, we never know. Today, market have a profit of 150 points or 150 pips you have. Suddenly, within a hour, maybe they're around the clock, the market around the clock with European markets, London markets, the UK markets, Europe, US markets. So when they keep running, there definitely there'll be a lot of fluctuation will be there in the market. So today, have 150, and suddenly they'll be come down to 50. It may be go to negative 150. So how to protect your profit, that's most important thing gradually. So you have to have a proper plan for that to protect your profits. So these are the few points to avoid the trader to be a, you know, mistakes. Let's move on the next. So next is very important, like don't average. So mostly we have do averaging the positions normally. So don't use averaging as an excuse to accept the fact that you are existing the position loser and should be cut. You may only average if you have high financial capacity. That means uh, you have enough capacity of your balance or equity on your account, and uh, you are uh, only add in case of uh, you know that cases. Otherwise, you can have average your positions when you are evening side. So normally we don't do that. You know, basically our mind never allows to do that. As you said, like we want to protect your profits, so we normally cut off their profits. Maybe when your market is on against side, like if it's going on against your position, you try to average. Fine, it's not, not bad to average a position, but same time, you have to check properly what type of risk capacity you're going to take. But normal cases, try to avoid averaging the position that accumulate your loss multiple times. For example, you take a position today with one lot size, for example, 1.00 standard lot size, suddenly market crashed to 50 or 50 or under pitch, you try to again averaging it. Again, market is on one side, again is against you. You're adding one more lot. So when you keep adding multiple times of your position on the loss side, so what happened, the under pips, it become like a 200 pips or 300 or 500. So what happened, you multiple your loss also. So it's a high risky trade basically. So for that, as I said, like keeping a stop loss, whether you come out from your stop loss, or you go entry again the market from the market trend. Maybe you are in the buy side, suppose market is crashing downside and you're trying to come out with a stop loss and you're going the opposite side. But if you keep averaging the position, definitely, unless you have a proper high financial capacity, it's not advisable to average your position with keeping your full exposure in the market with all your capacity of your equity. So next is like learn from your mistakes. Obviously, everyone does a mistakes. Like in, in trading, obviously, it's a normal process to go with the mistakes. But good traders recognize and accept the mistakes and cut their positions. And they never average every. Inexperienced traders run losing position, hoping for the reversal. So basically, the, you have to learn like mistakes always happens. So as you want to be a good trader in the markets, like you want to be, see, there are no 100% successful traders, but still, you can always uh, recognize your mistake where exactly the mistake has happened. So when there is, it goes against your positions of you're going or on a negative side of your capacity of risk. So definitely you need to avoid and you can always uh, 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 do the, not doing the average is always the best uh, advised for us you know, to the beginners. Maybe even it's, it's available for beginners as well as for the smart traders, you know, it doesn't care like. But always uh, learn from the mistake is always good to correct yourself, to change your trading plan they change your strategy or change your type of trading or change your product you know into like different instruments suppose you are not much comfortable on the currencies maybe it helps you on commodities like commodities like a gold silver or oil maybe you can jump onto the stocks markets like indexes or something which helps you you know so try to learn from the mistakes 
So keep your emotion in check. That's the next level of uh, mistakes normally we do. As we are a human being, definitely we have a lot of emotions in the trading. Definitely, sometimes we, I heard from my seniors or something, like they said, like, you know, they, they learned uh, your character, that the trading teach you the character, what type of character you are, basically. So that should mean, like, it's keep your emotion checked. When you make a bad trade, as a, it's, again, develop a new plan and wait for a good levels again grown rush into the new positions normally happens because when you uh, go into the markets and you got stuck and you got come off the loss n number of times like five or six or seven times what happens generally your mind goes into that oh right so it's something like i have to go back again 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 if your market is going on against direction you jump onto the against direction when they, again you come back again the market go up again see it's it's it's, it's market react It's a market character such a way it's it's on both the sides and it can come down it can go up it's never with our hand no but there should be a plan so it's mean that emotion is very important here don't jump into the market just like that to to take the profit always keep your plan keep your trade uh trading plan on the place as you're successful to come out in this so let's move on to the next mistakes usually happens the next one is like be confident uh, once you have a formulate the right strategy and a decision is made to buy or sell at a certain level do not hesitate to act when the level is comes so make sure that you're very confident on your strategy or your trading plan so this makes you buy only by experience like you know you can't like you know so uh, most of traders will get scared or get fear when the you know when there's a little bit uh, market fluctuate on either side happens because when the market news comes it may slightly come out from your strategy slightly because when you play the stop loss and target nothing to worry that's mean like uh, you're more con be you're much confident on what you have been planned so once you have formulated a right strategy make your decisions in a certain way that you're not going to come out from this so usually this all happens because it's all related to the psychology like you know uh, because when there is a your, your strategy got wrong for like continually for two three times obviously what happened the fourth time you try to orient yourself like get scared yourself that you know or oh, by its way it may go against you it may come market may go, go against you so you try to come out but unfortunately when you cut your position or close your laws or something but your strategy was successful many things happen many times because out of 10 times you tried with your, your trading plan out of six or seven it's successful ratio like you're getting a 60 70 percent is a very good success ratio so never come out without if you have a very good confront on your trade so be disciplined the same thing like discipline is what separate good from the bad traders it's a very important point like uh, discipline like that's the most important word to be a uh, more important factor to be uh, uh, used here good traders develop the discipline to wait for the right level to trade with the proper control and discipline use the stop loss I mean, loss us profits. So always a disciplined trader, always wait for the opportunity. It's not mean today market has moved somewhere like 100 points or 100 tips, but I miss a chance. No, it's not like that. If the, your strategy doesn't give the entry or exit level, you have to wait. You have to wait for the patient to get into the market. Instead of that, the market has already moved 100 points. So I want to get some prior profit, but still my strategy is not given any entry or any signal. But so while I was showing something like expert advisor, my expert has not shown anything, but I want to take this profit. No, it's, a, it's not a disciplined way. So if you want to be a disciplined way, wait for your levels, wait for your signal to come, wait for your right level to come to the trade with a proper control and make sure that you're getting to the market with a proper stop loss and with a proper profits. So next is considering the margin trade as a business. It's very important. Don't think like uh, this trading, it's, uh, it's, you know, that it's highly risk involved in there. And same thing, I potentially you can make it out. But think that is as your act as a business. As uh, while I was saying, the exposure, like how, for example, you have an asset of under thousand dollars. So make sure that you are only investing uh, with the ten thousand to twenty thousand dollars, not more than that. You know that makes sense that you are getting a risk within your tolerance. It's not made above that. So take all the necessary steps to ensure that make profit and avoid unexpected loss. Manage your trading account in the same manner that you could manage your own business. So it's treat as a business. Don't treat as a time pass because market is a vast. So it's like you know, it's not a it's it's not a game like to understand easily. But there is a work you have to do a lot of homework. Like starting from your beginning, like talk, starting from the small small uh, understanding about it. So that how exactly it acts. So consider margin trading as a business that really helps you to get you to the next level of your trading. Uh, type of uh, 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 type of business. 
So next we'll be moving to like a manager risk. So always be prepared to take action in case the market goes against your irrespective of what others were saying. Uh, see, this is uh, also very important like manager risk. That means, for example, if you are taking any position in the markets unexpectedly, like uh, uh, without uh, any type of any type of any type of uh, uh, unavoidable situation, market may go against you. Suppose you don't care place any stop loss or you not fix your mind that uh, I want to take a risk to this level or I not able to take a mind keep your mind to take my this much risk to be taken my account and definitely you know that is like it's it, uh, it's it's also considered so always make sure that you prepare yourself to take enough immediate action in the markets uh, not like just averaging or not like leaving your portion just like overnight you know that will avoid you like uh, uh, to do the mistakes we try to avoid so exploit the range market since around like 75 percent of the time markets are ranging apart from any news comes or any economic uh, uh, factors involved in the markets obviously most of the times are in uh, 75 percent of the range markets so basically uh, intraday traders uh, like we can say like a uh, normally uh, type of day traders or we can say uh, uh, speculators or type of uh, they have some strategy and they try to work out uh, with this type of moving for example, the market has moved almost 300, 500 pips move in a day, not in one side direction, but it is on a both this direction. When the market news comes, it may move with under direction, but they take advantage on 75% of the move, which is in the range, which is range, because we very clearly understand that find out about each day highs, low, expect the range compared to previous day, and the trade of the range with the protective stop loss. So very good time to trade. It's a very good time. So not mean like uh, you may think, okay, when the market news comes, the market are very volatile. Yeah, good, but the risk is very high. You have a big risk on when you're taking on the market news. But when you're trading on a not marked news, like it's almost a raging market, defining is very easy. Like you can find out the day high, the low, and it's on the range, and it's within the previous range of high and low, that defines your stop loss. So your, your risk is more or less controlled. That's the most important to be, to be considered here. So these are a few things. Uh, making a mistake, it's not bad at all. And it is a part of the process. But when your mistakes are made repeatedly, like one again and again, uh, it, that become an unprofitable habit so, uh, to be like. And it's become a habit. So this is how exactly you can avoid uh, uh, a top uh, traders who can top avoid this type of mistakes. Definitely, uh, most of the traders will come across, even uh, successful traders or uh, beginners or unsuccessful traders will definitely come across this. But if you follow this type of, uh, you know, guidelines uh, to avoid we definitely we can overcome these mistakes so let's uh, move on to the next topic how to manage your risk see manage your risk uh, uh, different type of managing risk even uh, uh, this has like uh, a few things to discuss like managing risk using orders as i said like so orders are the platform has enough facilities like orders are critical tool for any type of trader so the platform which you use as you know like i provide uh, mt4 mt5 even we provide c traders platform so this is a platform which provide you the entirely at uh, tools should always be considered when executing the uh, against the trade strategy other uh, orders can be also used to enter into trade as well uh, help you protect your profit and uh, limit your uh, you know downside risk so in such case like limit order stop order trading stop these are the major orders which help you as I said, limit order, which helps you to book your profits, you know, uh, as I said, like uh, when you have enough profit, try to protect your profits. For example, you take a uh, one lot of uh, trade and uh, you won't run with the market because the market is positive for you. Like if it's a positive, definitely you have to run your profit. Make sure you're running with the market, you're there in the market. How to do that? By giving a 50% of your uh, limit order by, you know, placing the orders. Or maybe for 75% of your uh, orders be placed to book it, remain 25, you can run the profit with keeping your uh, stop as your, uh, your purchase level or maybe your executor levels. This will help you to, you know, manage your risk. And stop order. Definitely stop order is very important. Like as I keep on saying every time, maybe some people get irritated or maybe get something like they feel, oh, I, I always keep stop, but I always, I, my stop is triggered every time. No, it doesn't mean that way. So, so you're not in the right 
maybe you're you are wrong on your trading plan or maybe you're wrong on a strategy so you have to correct your strategy so that's what i keep saying like there are to when the strategy is not working and keep losing your uh, way that same type of trade definitely you have to change you have to correct your strategy completely so stop order it definitely helps you to avoid uh, uh, to manage your risks uh, keep on your, uh, uh, your your portfolio on a proper shape uh, which will give you a, a, a continuity to your uh, you know your entire portfolio that runs on a positive side doesn't matter like for example uh, if you run a trade for 10 trades and if four or five trades have been success other five traders have been lost doesn't matter but you have to keep running in the same way which accumulates your yeah, a gradual portfolio uh, uh, profitably will come out from your uh, you know from the risk so trailing stop loss it's also very important like a trailing stop loss like you know many platform has the facilities or you can do manually with the trailing stop loss when your profit keep increasing you raise your stop loss gradually for example you keep a stop loss of 100 pips and your target is 150 pips for example market touching 150 pips you know so gradually you increase 100 pips to your your 50 level, 50 pips again market keeps moving up that means you are you are with the market we are you are positive with the market so you gradually increase the 50 pips to your uh, execute level that means you bought or sold level Again, markets keep moving. So that way, you know, you're, you're completely protecting your profit 100%. When you reach your stop loss, trailing stop loss to your purchase or maybe your executive level, that means you are you're 100% safe. There is no risk. There is a zero risk on your trade when you do this type of trading. So these are the managing risks using orders. So this is more than enough. That's not mean that you have to look into your portfolio. Oh, I have this much. I have this much exposure. I have to take this much margin into it. I have only free margin this much. No. Apart from this, this is one of the managing risk by only with orders. So this also helps you to protect a entire uh, risk from your trading. So next type of uh, managing your uh, risk by using margin exposure. Uh, so most uh, people will, uh, when they're looking to the balance, you know, when they take trading, uh, they always, you know, when they are negative side and the market goes a negative, we always look into the you know, platform. What is my balance? What is my equity? What is my free margin? What is my uh, uh, free margin percentage? No, I mean. That's that's the worry. That type of uh, things comes in your mind when uh, you are not have any plan, when you don't have place anything. When you have a plan, when you have your exposure maintained properly uh, with the proper uh, exposure and the margin. So this type of worries and this type of uh, no, uh, uh, things no, it never comes in your mind. So trading with the proper risk to the reward, definitely, because without risk, no trade cannot be make a profit. So that's it's a, this is, it's a written uh, uh, theory. So we have to take risk unless you make a reward. We have to make, unless you take a risk, you can't take a reward. So be patient and don't be over trade. As I said, be on your positive side, be on your confidence and discipline what you are maintaining and don't over trade. That means uh, sometimes you jump into the market. We are already discussing from the beginning of, uh, pra, uh, from the mistakes. So don't do major over trade. That means uh, instead of having a, a, like a 10% or 20% of your margin exposure, you try to use 50%. So what happens? Like a 50% sense, either you are doing a mistake on averaging your position on the loss side, or you are diversifying your investment to any other product because you see that you already have buy position or sell position in currencies. Suddenly, in the commodities market is moved. Suddenly, you have a move, a news came regarding oil. You, your oils keep moving, so you will try, try to jump into that uh, commodity. So what happens? Your entire plan, your entire exposure plan of your uh, uh, money management is completely uh, it's disturbed. So what happens? Other side you have a major risk. Other one side you have a lesser risk. So you have taken complete in you know, one point, like you no, know, you're taking all your margin to the markets. No, it's not that way. So don't use all the total exposed in the market to you know to control to take our over trade on it. So use a proper portion sizing. That's most important thing. So when you start trading, make sure that you practice on a demo account. For example, you want to start with the ten thousand dollars. Yeah, keep your ten thousand dollars as a demo account and please practice with that. Day. Exposure, like I want to capable of taking two percent or three percent of margin only. So sizing is very important. Like take a point one zero size. Suppose you are more interested on more major currencies. I am very much interested because when there is a, a dollar get weak and definitely all other currencies will become appreciated. So they won't take this opportunity. So we are fine. You can do because all the markets moves on all the currency, especially moves on direct currency moves on the same direction. 
only the indirect currency moves on different directions so obviously you can you can take the opportunity all the currencies by splitting out the position like 0 0.10 or 0 0.20 or 50 whatever maybe the capacity you have can take the risk which can help you so these are one of the important topic we have been covering today which i hope this have been uh, helping few uh, about this information to help you for the long term trades uh, uh, this is all about for today uh, do you have, you have any questions? Uh, uh, please uh, give your post on the questions, please. Thank you. Thank you, Sai. If you have any questions, please write them down. You are most welcome, sir. If you have any questions in the future, please just write an email to webinar at icm.com or support at icm.com and we'd be glad to support you. Okay, so there is a question. What's the best way to catch a trend? Usually when uh, well, you have to, to, to make sure first that uh, you do your fundamental assessment, proper fundamental assessment for a certain uh, for a certain currency, for a certain stock or uh, commodity. So when you when you do this, you you will find the trigger that there is uh, that the market is, uh, for example, mispricing uh, a certain instrument, and uh, and uh, the, on, uh, by the time uh, the the market will correct this price. So this is this is the first part to be done. The second part is by by applying technical analysis in order to get your best uh, your best entries for. Uh, for uh, for a trend, so most of uh, indicators they they do serve they do have the same uh, uh, target, but but with different uh, with different uh, uh, practice. So 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 you have to choose uh, the the suitable the suitable technical indicator that you, maybe you are using. Uh, you are using one and not the other. So so you just have to. Make sure the fundamentals and the technicals they do uh, align together, and uh, and rely on your uh, technical mainly for your entry and for fundamental to confirm the trend direction up or down. Okay, so there is a question related to the non-farm payrolls on Friday. So mainly just uh, it's, it's it's not our topic today, but just to to pinpoint this, uh, mainly the dollar was was lately as a, a safe haven currency along with the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc, and all the positive data they are supporting the the risk appetite and the market and the risk sentiment. So when this when this happened, uh, investors investors rushed to stocks. Uh, or uh, stock indices, for example, the Dow Jones rallied around 700, 800 points, dumping the uh, the US dollar. That's why. So it was a risk on uh, risk on trading mood. Uh, Sai, there is a question. If you can answer it, what are the impact of opening one trade for different positions? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, what are the impact of opening one trade for uh, different positions? Like, uh, yeah, this, this, as I said, like it's it's all depend on your uh, what type of uh, risk factors or risk tolerance. Determine your risk tolerance first. So opening a position doesn't matter. Like if you have a ten thousand dollars, you can keep all. Even you can use the entire position or entire amount to the market. But what is the risk tolerance you can take from each and every position? That I consider as a matter. So based on that, like you know, the opening of each and every trade is a different level of uh, positions. Like you know, that makes sense to how to avoid over trade or maybe how to control the risk. That exactly speaks on it. Can you again show me that MT4 platform you explained in the beginning? Okay, we'll go fast to the MetaTrader 4 platform. So on the MetaTrader 4 platform, you have this strategy tester tab. So here, if you just click on this, or you go to view and click on strategy tester. So uh, it, it will open this uh, this tab at the bottom. You can see it's the tester. So you choose the expert advisor that you have. For example, you have the built-in expert advisors. You have Moving Average and MACD. They are done by MetaCodes. So also, you can buy you can buy uh, expert advisor from, for example, MQL5.com, the website or other websites. You just plug them to the MetaTrader 4. You choose the symbol that you want to test. You can either use the data that, that we provide or the data that is provided among the server, or you can buy data also and plug it to the MetaTrader 4, and you just run uh, you just run the, the, the backtesting. You choose the dates, and you just run the backtesting, and here you'll have the results of your backtesting, all the trades opened and closed. Uh, you can see also the graph of your equity, how your equity behaved. Also, you can have the report showing all the trades and all the uh, the factors that you have to take into consideration while considering whether your tra your trading strategy is successful or not.
Okay, I believe this is it for today. If you have any questions, you can write us an email at, uh, to webinar at icm.com or support at icm.com and we'll be glad to help you. Sai, so if you have any words. Thank you, Wael. Thanks, everyone. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Just a slight reminder, tonight we have the Federal Open Market Committee meeting outcome. Uh, so it's, it's a very important mover in the market. So uh, stay tuned for further updates on our Telegram channel.